did this last time. And this is how far we got. At the moment, it looks a bit plain, doesn't it? There's no transparent steel. You know, like a windscreen on the front. No, nothing like that. There's no details. It's not even painted or anything yet, no. So what we've got to do is we're going to add a few more details today. We're going to make the transparent steel thing. Uh, yeah, the main transparent steel viewpoint. And also a few more details on these spars. And then I think we'll be getting to say to them, well, we'll be, um, well, I'll give the whole thing a coat of paint. But I'll probably do that behind the camera because it's a bit boring watching some paint, isn't it? It's like watching paint dry, isn't it? And my dear wife, she just brought me my coffee in my very special mug. Oh, it can't be bad. Oh, look at that. <laughs> hey, Mad Monk, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, part three of the TIE Fighter bird box. It certainly is. And I couldn't make my mind up what sort of bird it's going to be for. And I thought, well, the flipping thing is so flipping big. I thought, well, there's no point in being for great tits. For, sorry, for blue tits. It's got to be great tits because they need a bigger hole. Because, you know, it's... It's going to be plenty of places to hang... Um, you know, fat balls on, <laughs> as you do. So that's what we've done so far. And it's very, obviously, it's going to be very stylistic. It's not going to be an accurate representation. It's not going to be scale, is it, after all? It's a big bird box. For birds to live in, they don't care. It's just, it's just me being an idiot, really, making something like this. So hey -o, there you go. So what we're going to do is today, or oh, add a few more details on the spar, on the two spars here. I don't know, if the, do they call them spars? What do they call them? I've just got, to, just, just got to check. So these are the solar arrays, you see. Yeah. <laughs> right, so I'm going to just got to check what they're called. Do they have a name even? Oh, it's a pylon. I'm very sorry. It's not a spark. It's a pylon. These are the um, solar array pylons. Well, no, sorry. The solar array wing pylons. That's what they are. I can hit my microphone. I'm very sorry. So let's get on with that. And... We're also going to, like, so we're going to be making the transparent steel viewpoint out of a block of wood. And there's one I prepared earlier, all blue Peter Stardy and all that. I had this old scrap of wood that's been kind of glued up years ago. It was an old tread or something of, of a dodgy staircase. And um, so what I've done is I just got the compass out and cut it out on the bandsaw. You could do it with a jigsaw if you want. You know, it's you. If you're going to make something stupid like this. <laughs> if you want to cut around this, you can use a jigsaw if you like. That's it. Anyway, and there's my compass, which I used to, you know, to mark it out, so I could then cut it out on the jigsaw. Now, I've prepared to cut through little bits of pieces, little bits of wood, that we'll be putting on in a moment. So I'm going to bring you back down here to reality. In other words, my bench. I only just put the fire on. It's chilly in there, I'll tell you. I'm glad I got my mug. Yeah. Thank you, Geraldine. I don't know if, who's here. Who's here? Do, 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 do. Geraldine! <laughs> Hello there. Thank you very much, Geraldine. Very appreciate it. That really is. And Kit Kat. Can't believe my unbelievable timing. Got home literally five minutes ago. Hey, well done, Kit Kat. Mad Monk, yeah, part three of the Toy Fighter. Ah, uh, so, uh, so, the wit. Did it? Uh, I can't remember. Is it Susan or Sharon? Oh, Sharon DeWitt, isn't it? Or Susan DeWitt? Sharon? Susan? I can't remember. I remember Shannon. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. I forget mine sometimes. Dee, 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 dee. Right, let's get to it then. All right, let's move this camera into a more um, sensible um, position. Ooh. How do you do it? Oh, yeah. Let's, let's leave it. You're going down. There we are. Right down to. Oh, there you go. Now, I was hoping to do this a bit, you know, during the week actually as well. But I got a bit snowed under with stuff, I did. And also, well, I was making something else, which I could have, I could have streamed that, but I didn't want that to interfere with this stream because you can't organise the, um, the videos. So I want to make sure they stay together, you see. So I want to make sure I do that one and that one and that one and that one until that's finished. And then, uh, but then do another project. So I, 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 anyway, I made a, uh, <laughs> a, a mirror for my granddaughter. A unicorn mirror. She likes unicorns. She's not Brixton, no. No, she's, she's on her top. Actually, you've met her, I think. My little Sophia. Anyway, da, 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 da. it's quite nice when you can make your grandchildren presents and stuff because, at the end of the day, um, well, they're different. No one else has got them, have they? 
And this one's certainly different. It's got a big unicorn on the front. It's done in Tarsia, a bit like what, how I did the letterbox. And then it's got these in Tarsia, like stars and rainbowy things. On, on, yeah, it's a, it's a white framed mirror and, that I made. And anyway, it's all very pretty, very kiddie like. Yeah. But it's got a few fixed on the wall because it's a proper glass mirror. So it's not something she can play about with. No, it's one she's going to have to use properly. Kiddie mirrors tend to be like, like bits of metal, shiny metal. And it's like, you know. You know, hall of mirrors or something though. No. You're in all funny shapes. Like, yeah, you know, this sort of shape actually. <laughs> Saying that I've lost a bit of weight. I've lost three three kilos. Yeah, three kilos since I started, so I'm in the right direction. And I'm plodding on. I haven't had no alcohol. No alcohol. I don't know how I'm managing, I really don't. But I am. So there you go. So first of all, let's do the uh, pylon, the solar array wing pylons. But first before I do that. We're gonna need some glue mixed up. Now, so I'll mix some glue. Do, 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 do. So we're adding a little bit of detail, basically, to the pylons and the uh, the rest of it. Then, once I've got those bits on, I'm not worrying about the back so much, because you've got to see it, it's gonna be stuck in the tree. Um, what I'm more worried about is what you can see from the front. So we'll detail up both solar ray wings inside and out, within reason. And obviously the transparency or viewpoint at the front here. And they have a little bits of detail like I chuck on what you're gonna see from the front. It's stylistic, you know what I mean? It's, it's obvious what it's supposed to be if you know if you're a Star Wars fan after all. Dee, dee, dee. So it's put mix a bit of glue up. Using the old um cascamite powder resin wood glue, glue which is a urea formaldehyde. Ooh, doesn't sound very healthy, does it? Because it's not. I should have put my mask on, I forgot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. There you go. So you put a bit of powder in there. I do this back to front actually. You're supposed to put the water in and then add the powder to the water. But I prefer doing it this way. I've got this quite sus now. You know, this whole mixing to fine out. I add the water to the powder, make it into a bit of a thick paste. And then I just add a little bit more water. I am pretty much know, you know, pretty much know how much to add these days. We've done it so many times. And then I leave it for a little bit and that absorbs the um, the moisture into the powder. And then I'll give it an extra little bit of whizzing about with my hands and then uh, that'll be ready. So what we've got here, I've, I've mixed it all up though, these were in order. I made, I've already made these little bits. But I've got to make another one of those, which I've got here. And they're basically, gonna, th these bits are gonna go on there like so. Just put a bit of detail on the front. And then they're gonna go on here like so. So it's just trying to mimic within reason, so it's not quite so bland and boring. So it's going to be sort of a bit like that, really. Um, there's, there's one I've done. That's one I've already prepared. It's a little bit on the short side, but it'll be fine. Well, that's supposed to be from the other side, actually. So that's going to be on there, sort of like that. And then there's some extra little bits. I'll just keep adding bits of wood until I'm happy with it, basically. <laughs> there's, there's no plan. No, we're winging it. So I'll, I'll stick that on there, then stick that on there, then stick it on there. Oh, what an absolute bomb. And you think, my God, what have I done? Pull tree, all for one little birdie's family in there. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's what I say, it's ridiculous. So, yay, coffee. Oh, that's a good idea. Got to have a coffee. <laughs> well, I don't even realize I've actually been, I've been spending a bit of money for my other channel. I was going to give it a, I was going to give it a last bash, the other channel. Um, with, yeah, with the view that we're going to, you know, give it a bit of a push. And I haven't really needed to. The, my my food, last few videos on the other channel, I've done really, really well. I don't know why. I don't know what I've done different. I think it's because I'm, I'm sort of being a bit, um, how to put it, I'll take the mick. <laughs> That's what I've been doing. We've been taking the mick. But hey, oh. But they kind of blew up. I just, for me, I've got loads of views in my last few videos. The one early today, you know, um, one of my videos a couple of days ago, it's done over t about 24,000 views in about a day and a bit. Two days? I think it's two days now. That's a lot for me. Me little channel. So I'm using that. Let you, let's make sure you can see. That's how, there we go. So I'm using what we call a bench hook. This is a bench hook. And I sometimes use that for cutting wood at right angles. 
The other thing you can use is a shooting board as well you can use. All I'm using that for is just so I can push against the bench, I plop this bit of wood against it, that gives me something to put pressure against. Now if you were like, um, wanted to play an end grain for instance, I would use this other little jig type thing that I made here. I'm very much a believer in jigs, especially if you're doing repetitive work. It makes life a lot easier. Now this one is specifically made for my badger plane. I know it doesn't look like a badger. No, it looks like a plane. It's basically a shoulder plane. And the reason why it's a shoulder plane, the blade goes right to the edge. And um, because I go right, right to the edge on this badger plane, it can sit here, on here, right to the edge. And that basically slides in here like so, and I can go shh, 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 like that. And the idea being is, is if you've got, say, a piece of wood that's at right angle, let's say there's a bit of pine here, put that in there like so, and because you've got this piece of timber here, that is your stop, and that's sacrificial, so it, it, that could be replaced, because all it's got a couple of screws in the bottom. So I just take it out. I can literally just do that, and I can then... Obviously, you've got to set your plane up. That's too, way too coarse at the moment. And then you just you play in your end grain. And square it up. Like well, I say, it's way too coarse. And it's blunt. And it's pine. I usually use oak, which is loads better. Where are we going? And that... And also, and I haven't chopped it off square yet, anyway. Uh, so you basically, it's a shooting board. So you, you run across there, and it allows you to plane the end grain of a piece of wood. That plane's not sharp. Not to my standards, anyway. No, it's not. Far from it. But you, I've obviously been using it on something quite hard that needs sharpening up again. But I just want to show you, anyway, you can make a shoot board like this, great for like, planing end grain. And it does work really well, even though I made a really poor example of it then. So you could do the same with this, you see, you could have that in there like so. Just having something stop to push a bit of wood up against, just so you can run your plate, have some, so you, there's a small bit of timber like this, you, you, and the shape of it, because the shape, you can't put it in the vice very easily. You could clamp it down, but then the clamp's going to be in the way. So all I've just is doing fun, push it against there like so, and that allows me to play like so. Now the little plane I'm using is a little Stanley low angle plane. Um, I can't remember what number this one is now, actually, it's top of my head, does it say on there? This one is a 12. It's a standing low angle plane, the low angle plane, what they mean by that is planes that set at a really low angle. The idea is, is that when you're planning end grain, for instance, you can actually, do, you know, it takes very thin shavings off. And also, you can um, adjust the mouth, the mouth is here, in front of the blade, so you basically undo this here, put a little lever, and you can move that sole plate backwards and forwards. That allows you to take more or less material. It's, it's basically like a chip breaker, really. But this works really, really well. I've got a couple of them, different, different sizes. But people think that is actually much, if you look at the angle of the blade, oh, you think they're a lot, lot lower angle than, say, for instance, oh, this one argument's sake, this beast, my number seven, which is my jointing plane. There's actually very little, the cutting angle of this is only about two degrees um, steeper than that. You'd think it wouldn't be. You'd think, crikey, that's a huge difference between those two, wouldn't you? It's not. Now, the reason for that is, this one has the bevel on the bottom. So this one's effectively is sharpened on the bottom of the blade, whereas this one is sharpened on the top. So the actual cutting face is already um, set at a fairly shallow angle on a standard plane like this, number seven, Bailey. So that is only like a couple of degrees actually shallower, that's all it is. It's a bit of a um, misconception, really. People don't realise this, oh, that's not lower. But there's still a lovely plane to use, so, oh, you know, you don't, you know, the sort of stuff I do with this, you're not going to want to do with that one. Because that's so big and bulky. But it's a fantastic plane. And it's very old, it's, you know, when I um, originally got that, that was in hell of a state. It's got in a bit of a state now, actually, to be honest, it needs, um, a bit, of, a bit more love putting back into it, but it was, um, I had to completely rebuild it because it was all rusty and, you know, the handles were, the old handles and they'd split and wobbling about all over the place. So I made up, or machined up some extra little bits for it, like screw threads and stuff like that. And um, made new handles and 
I've milled the bottom again with a sole plate. And it's a lovely plane, eh? Lovely plane. You'd have to pay a lot of money to get an equivalent plane today. You know, the, the likes of like Lee, Lee Nielsen and stuff like that, which cost a lot, a lot of money. This is going to get a bit tricky because I've got to try and plane that top now. Because that tape was in both directions. That's what, I, that's what I decided to do. I don't know why, but I did. I'll hold it on there again. Well, actually, no, I did it that way last time. And then I finished off with the um, sander. Uh, And this one's got a knot in it. That's not very helpful. <laughs> All the wood I've been using, old scraps and off cuts and from other projects. So that goes, make sure it goes on there. That's perfectly fine. I need to sand that really. The problem when you're going that way, the grain effectively is going upwards. So you're hooking into the grain and you create this tear out with a plane. So really I should be playing from this direction and not that direction. But I took the worst of it off. So if I want to, I could do that. Uh, that's a bit. No, I'll do it. Like so. Uh, maybe not. There you go. You've still got the tear out on the other side of the knot then, because no, the grain goes up on one side and down on the other. That's doing it. That's right. I'll just take it all off the edges there. I wonder if that glue is ready to be mixed properly. Oh, it's like baking a cake. There you go. So. <laughs> that needs sharpening all. Oh, I need to have a sharpening. So there you go, we've got two bits there, similar, not the same, but they're near enough. I'll take a bit more footage. Da, 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 da. There's something about working with wood, I'll tell you. It's just, it's, it's, it can be a very fun material. Also, it can be very frustrating as well. I'm not a lover of working with pine, but because I um, you know, make shutters for customers, for which I really ought to be doing, um, I've got a job I'm supposed to be doing. That's it. That's good. I'm happy with that. That's good enough. So, okay, we've got the two uh, parts for the pylons. So, all these extra bits that will be glued on, that all helps stiffen all these bits up, you see, and strengthen the structure. Although, I think it's pretty strong anyway, to be honest. Right, so that, anyway, that's the shooting board, that's what that is. So, it allows you to put a bit of wood, you've got to play in the end grain of that, you put it across here, like so. And then you can run your plane down there, like so playing the end grain. The idea is this piece of wood here will stop the, the end grain here splitting out. I'll try to demonstrate. Just say for instance that like for you can get this sort of splitting on the end edge there. Let's put that back out of the way. Oh I've got some really bad news. Got some really bad news. My scroll saw needs a new motor. It might just be a condenser but I think it needs a new motor. It don't start properly, you have to kind of like help it to start. It's probably the condenser. But we'll see. I think I might have a motor actually that I can replace on it. It's such a good little machine, that um, scroll saw that I got. It's okay. Where's I going to do? What do I do? I was up here on top of my solder nine. Let's see if it needs any more water. So I'll just keep mixing until I'm satisfied. Because this glue, what happens is it tends to. Um, the more you mix it, the more liquid it becomes. Strange as it might sound, but it does. It becomes more, more yeah, it's, it's already doing, it's already becoming more like glue and not like curds and whey. Curds and whey? Yeah, well, I'll get separated, but so yeah, it's become even more. What I want to do is when I go that, it's just trying to fall off the actual, yeah. At the moment, you can put it above your head, you see, like, like your, um, yeah, like your meringue, your meringue mix. Who's ever done that? Oh, I have. I just love flipping pe um, pe flipping pizzas, what am I talking about? <laughs> Pancakes, <laughs> when the kids were little, it used to be fun. What's your favorite pancake? For me, it was just sh sugar and lemon juice, that's for me. That's what I, was, I like. There you go, let's become, see, even, 
and it's starting to fall off now. I'm trying to anyway, so it's definitely more liquid. There might be a little tiny, tiny extra bit of water. A little bit stiffer than that. Probably will look some more actually when we do the transparent steel viewpoint. First of all, with the transparent steel viewpoint, you know, the windscreen of the TIE Fighter. <laughs> um, originally, I was going to do it on the lathe, and I thought so I was a bit silly on the lathe because it'd just be like, I don't know, it's going to look like a saucer or, or a platter put on the front. And the transparent steel um, viewpoint isn't it, it's like hexagonal in its windows. There's eight windows plus centre, so it's nine. Yeah, so it's like segments. It almost looks like football, I suppose, not football, because they're not hexagonal, are they? No. <laughs> they're geodesic. It's right, isn't it? Geodesic, yeah, I think that's ge geodesic. That's something I would like to do, is make a geodesic greenhouse. You know, where you've got all these, like, hex shaped parts, and they've got, um, sort of windows. But all the timbers basically interconnect with, so all the frame pieces interconnect with, um, like, these little little joints, like, six or eight-way joints. And you, the, the structure has no framing in the sense of, like, um, rafters or anything, it's just all these short bits of wood, all the same, all fixed together, so you look like you've got like a half a football in the <coughs> in the garden, but it's effectively it's a greenhouse. But then I thought it would be really impractical and end up being really expensive. What end, in the end of the day, all it is really is a greenhouse or polytunnel. So um, I'll probably just build down polytunnel. So we need to replace one. We've got a wooden one in the garden we need to replace. And two years ago we bought... Um, a pair of cheapy greenhouses, and oh my god, they were such rubbish, I should have sent them back. And uh, within no time at all, the wind ripped them to pieces, in a sense, they just twisted them. So all we're going to do is we're going to leave them there, but we're going to get a new cover, which is basically plastic polythene, you know, you know um, the uh, polytunnel plastic, and put that over. <coughs> Hold it all together. <laughs> Bury it in the ground, as you do. You know, one, one part, one of the greenhouse is actually okay. I don't really want to replace it completely. Any day, it's just got to do a job. But the big wooden greenhouse that we've got, it's still a polytunnel, but we need to. That's really, it's, been, it's been up about eight years, and it's, all the frame has got a bit odd. It's twisted. It's all bitter and twisted, it is. And I see you guys saying. <laughs> dee, 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 dee. Ooh, what are you saying? Dee, dee, dee. Let's come and chat again. Hey, go on, good buddy. How you doing, mate? Oh, do you know what? When I was talking about that gingers, that's the first thing that came into my head. I bet gingers have maple syrup. But you're not, you're not in Canada, though. <laughs> yeah, we get, um, you get maple syrup here. You get, it's quite, actually quite reasonably priced in our local littles in France, where we are. There's a great explanation, of course, and that's why I'm just joining now. Ooh. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, so Glasgow Kiss has been doing framing and installation. Well, internal framing, like dry lining. Because you showed me a picture, didn't you, of, of what you've been up to? Your prefab type houses, you bet. Pre like, well, yeah, like flat pack type houses. So, yeah. Oh, God, hate insulation. Hello, Mendemonda. Mendemonda. Tongue tied now. Mendemonda. Hey, Peter Dallas, how you doing there? Bonsoir. You as well, buddy. Hey, you. Uh, nice. It's my, oh, it's my bench hook, yes. No, no, I, I, I was only about, I think it was about five or six minutes late this time, which wasn't my usual lateness. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's going to look pretty cool, I think. Crap, Suzette. Ooh, yes. You are right, Menda Monda. Crap, Suzette. Yum, yum. You always get places that don't. They usually do these things. Oh, like a donut mix. I thought they're called now. Oh, crikey. I like little twizzly things like they come out of a um, pipe and gun. Oh. Churros. 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 Um, then that looks like a donut mix. You get loads of them here. Very fattening, obviously, and full of sugar. And then crepes, lots of crepes. What else do you get? Oh my God. If you want, uh, <laughs> be really careful, unless it's your thing. If you go to a, well, say for instance, a, a fete or something like that on France, you know, um, a fete or something like that, 
where they look a village fet, where they got um, food stalls and stuff like that. And you see all these what they look like big sausages, ondelets or andelets, ondelets, ondelets, and they're um, they're full of guts and stuff, grisly bits. Horrible. God, the better. So, so the French love them. Absolutely love them. I just, I just, it's just, it's just awful. It's awful, awful as well. It's just, you know, really chewy, nasty stuff. I don't like them. No. I had them once, never again. In fact, it's when we first moved here, me and Darren was doing this renovation in this house. And, um, no nail gun. And <laughs> I bought them by mistake thinking they were sausages. I didn't know. Didn't bother to read the um, ingredients. They just looked like sausages. So we bought them. And I fried them up. And I cooked them and I cooked them and they still didn't look any better. But stuff's not quite right here I go. Anyway, I thought, no, no, they, they need a bit of help cooking. So I thought I'd, I'd cut them. As you do, I cut them down and it's just... <laughs> Like exploded out of its skin. It's like some of that alien it was. It was awful. Oh, yeah, andlets. Is that on? Come over. Is on? Because of Is that on? Andlet. On the let? Oh, anyway, they're horrible. Don't do it. If you want a sausage, safe bet is a Toulouse. Sausage. Sausage. Yeah, a Toulouse. Oh, they're nice. I like a Toulouse. They're like a proper sausage. Right. <laughs> You get more curly ones as well, or long ones. Doesn't matter. Or uh, mercury which are like spicy. They've got lots of paprika in them. I'm not so keen on them. When you, when you fry them up, they just make oil red. <laughs> but there's sausages and sausages in France, like there's anywhere else, you know. Some some sausages are full of like, gristle and horrible stuff. Yeah, 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 break your teeth. Not very good. And some sausages are really good. So first of all, I'm going to glue these bits onto there. Now, before I do the other details, what I mean that is like, fring oh, once I've got everything on that I was going to do today, I think I'm going to give it a coat of paint, like I said earlier, and then um, in grey probably, and then add more details to it once it's been painted. Because some of the details, so that's going to go over there, like that. Because some of the details are a bit fine, and I just sort of go around like cutting bits of paint, you know, I might end up still doing that, paint, you know, cutting it in with, with a brush. We'll see. We'll see. And that's going to go on there like that. Like that. Just like that. Where's uh, uh. the diddy man? Right. <laughs> just adding little details. Just make it a little bit more interesting. A bit more convincing it's supposed to be. A TIE fighter, not such a lazy representation of a TIE fighter. Because if you look at a TIE fighter, they're very really detailed things actually. Like especially on the solar array wings. Um, but I have to be realistic. One thing is this, this project will go on and on and on and on um, and really wouldn't you know, do very well outside because all these little nooks and crannies are all going to get watering. So you've got to bear that in mind. It's going the other way. Just like that. Right. I'm going to nail in there. And then I'm going to push that one down there. Do you know what? There's me struggling. You know what you should always have? A clamp. Yeah, have a clamp at hand, and it makes life a lot easier. These little G-clamps, or C-clamps, depending where you are, or where you're from. We, I will always call them G-clamps. So I'm putting these on here. I'm not going to do them, put them on the back. If I thought you were going to see it, I would, but you're not going to. All right. oh, the glue's squeezing, that's a good sign, because we don't want water traps, if we can help it. Now that side. We've got a bit at an angle like this. What's going to happen is those nails are going in like that. Because they're going in, in at an angle, if they're going straight, they just pull out. With the expansion and contraction of the wood, they just pull out. But put them at an angle like so, what happens is they lock in, like a dovetail. So that's what I'm doing, that's honest. There's always method in the madness. Although I made a mistake in my video earlier on the other channel. <laughs> I'd, um, I've been trying to do my videos on the other channel where when I'm doing my spiel, I'm trying not to have any edits. Well, the last video I did, I, I made a couple of mistakes. I thought, oh no, I'll just edit them out because I'm putting it to the computer anyway to upload it. So I thought I'd just edit it, edit it out, then I forgot. And there's me clapping like a seal. <laughs> then repeating myself. 
most people will understand what I'm doing because I, I, I mark, if for instance I made a mistake, what I do is I clap, do a couple of claps, and it shows up as two little peaks in my waveform on my editing software. And I know, ah, that's where it is. So I ain't got to like listen through the whole thing. I said, that's what it is, doing it. Yeah, it's about there, they go chop, chop, that's it, that's gone, join it up. So he's, yeah, well, I forgot, <laughs> I uploaded it. <laughs> I've got a bigger seal, I did, but never mind. I, I, I was about to delete it. I thought, oh, crap, I just delete that. I was sort of panicking over it. I don't know why. I'm a nervous wreck, I am. And um, anyway, <laughs> I went on there. And I had loads of views on it. I thought, oh, I'll have to leave it there. So I when I, it does about 1,000 views nearly in an hour. And I thought, oh, crikey. I'd better leave it. <laughs> Be clapping as a seal. So what thing I do? I forget. I get... The problem is, my head is full of all sorts of stuff I'm trying to do all the time. I kind of, I'm not, I've never been one, as you probably tell, <laughs> I'm not very organised. No, I should be. Um, I used to be, actually, with my work, when I had my business in England. I was, I was very organised, because you had to be. Everything was scheduled. But here, it's just been fun. I forget what day it is sometimes. don't even know what that, the day is. Because one day just rolls into another. I'm either in here or doing the garden or, you know, obviously been all, the other video, the other channel I've been doing a lot on as well. And sort of life gets taken up by all that. And you don't, you know, and it just, you forget. Well, I do. I forget to do all the things I'm supposed to be doing. Like put shoes on when I come in the workshop. I've got my flipping slippers on. <laughs> I better not drop, um, drop a chisel. <laughs> oh dear. I do love woodwork. And I, it's actually quite nice, because although I do try and take the mick out of stuff on, on my other channel, as you, as you, probably, you might have noticed, you might have noticed. It's still, sometimes, some of the topics are quite serious, you know, and, and quite sad, really. Even the one I did today about, um, you know, oh. I think the whole thing is a little bit sad that we've ended up in this place. But that, oh, we're not doing politics anyway, so there you go. Well, that'll be tomorrow night when I go live on the other channel. Hopefully I'll be on time. I'm trying to get myself sort of sorted out. I've ordered some bits of gear and... Um, I've got myself a new camera coming. It's, a, it's still a webcam, but it's designed for streaming. It's an Elgato face cam, and that's like the, apparently the best one you can get for, for streaming. And it was on offer! So I was going to, you know, take up the opportunity. I thought, oh, I should, I, should I? I couldn't really afford it, to be honest. I you know, hum and hum and hum and hum, and then I thought, oh, I'll just, just do it. To be, to be fair, actually, it's kind of Caroline. She says, just, just order it, just get it. You know, you at the day, you're not going to get better unless you actually, you've got to spend a little bit of money. It's not just about the content. A lot of it is, obviously, but, and obviously the way you, you perform as well. A lot of it's got to be down to, uh, you know, it being watchable. If, if the picture looks really bad, you know, you're going to be, um, well, it's not pleasant, is it? You know, and the webcam that I'm using at the moment, and the reason why I use a webcam, not a camera, is because the bit of equipment I need to you because I could I've got a really I've got a good cam oh sorry oh sorry for that now. um I've got a Panasonic G7 which you ca could stream from including in here the problem is I'd need a thing called a HDMI thing you know like a streaming card um and I've got one but it's not good enough quality and the one that is good enough quality is the one mate who also makes that camera that I've just ordered. The problem is it's a bit expensive for something that's really quite small. And then I'd have to get um, power packs and all sorts of other stuff. By the time you've done all that, you might as well have bought the face cam. And then you've got two cameras. And I'm not tying up a camera that I use in here as well. You know what I mean? I use my Panasonic when I'm making my other videos. You know, like the, the little edited videos I do on this channel. So I don't really want to tie a camera up in the studio while I'm going to be doing live streams in here. So it's a bit of a... I don't know. It was it'd been a catch twenty two, so I didn't get that. I got this um, face cam camera instead, and luckily it was on offer, so I bought it. So, and the, the other thing I've managed to get 
is another monitor upstairs as well. I wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for the, you know, like for instance the, um, what they call it, the super chats and stuff like that, and the, uh, uh, yeah, the buy me coffee, that's what I did. That's what I used. And also t-shirt sales. <laughs> I just tried, um, I didn't, I, I didn't even realise I had the money in, the, in there. I thought automatically it went into the bank account, but you, ha you have to request the money. I didn't realise, I didn't notice, so I went looking, so I'm useless, like that. And they had enough money in there, I thought, oh, Craigie. And Captain Caroline sort of said, you know, why didn't you get this and get that? So, what, what I do, you see, I, I have a technique with Caroline. I talk about it and talk about it until she's sick and deaf about it. And then she says, just go and get it. <laughs> <laughs> it works every time. <laughs> oh, God. Nah, she's a good girl, Caroline. She's been, she been out today with, um, she's been, uh, Oh, uh, ice skating. That was little Sophia's birthday today, so um, she's been ice skating. Well, Caroline didn't do ice skating because she's, uh, she's um, for one thing, she's not very confident with that sort of thing. But also, she's just had, she's been to the dentist and she used to have a crown across here, over, over three teeth. Because years and years ago, oh, oh, somebody's son, who somebody I've actually mentioned about before, actually, the father, Colin Dye. Well, his son, M Mark, um, on a swing, accidentally kicked Caroline's front teeth out. Basically, Caroline got too quick and he, you know, whacked, whacked his old feet straight into her gob. Obviously, they're very little, obviously, you know, lots of years ago. And she didn't have any teeth. So um, she's had this bridging crown thing for years. And... Uh, Anyway, it had to be redone. So at the moment, she's going around, all she's got is these spikes. And she's so self conscious of her, that poor thing. You know what she said, though? She's thankful for the masks. <laughs> she's, she's, you know, the only thing she, oh, she still hurt. Oh, I dropped it. I'm sure it still hurts a bit because it's um, in the cold, cold air. Well, like I say, you know, it's um, it's very fortunate. And do you know what? It's not costing a penny. It's all part of our um, our mutuel, which is our health insurance here. Yes, it covers dental. So, my daughter Yasmin. Had to wait, oh, maybe two months for an appointment, and she's registered with a dentist. <coughs> so it's mad. Oh, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, <coughs> we had our school dentist, and uh, we always have to go for our checkups. St. William's School and Fort St. Andrew, Norwich. Right, so I've got those two details there on. I'll leave the little clamps on there for a bit longer. But the next stage is going to be this transparasteel viewpoint made of wood. <laughs> so, like I got to say, I had this scrap of wood kicking about. It does have a few, obviously, little hole, little gaps and stuff in it, but I'm not worried. It's got to just fill it and, yeah, it's going to be painted anyway. Uh, and also got to be careful because it's got that there is actually filler there, 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 and there's screws in there. So it's an old staircase I took out from somewhere, I can't remember where, but from somewhere here in France. It looks like one of them space saving staircases. So that is going to go on there, but we need to shape it first. Yeah. So we're going to have to get creative. Oh, it's terrible, lovely. Oh, we want a bit of creation, we do. No? Okay. Well, I do. Nah, I think it's looking a bit better. What do you reckon? Let's have a look. So there's a little, little bit. I keep adding little details, and I get more and more kind of like toy fighterish. Yeah. Because if you look at it on here, I'll, I'll just grab the get off here just so I can show you. Hope I don't wobble about too much. Oh, there's a slight little spot. <laughs> Sorry. If you look here. Look. 
See, that's the transparent steel viewpoint, that is. Just, just in case you're wondering. That is the pylons. And these are the solar array wings. Amazing, hey? But we never knew. There you go, look. So we're going to make that bit. Now, if you look at it on here, you see this, the front of it is actually round. The whole front. But the actual transparent steel bit is this little bit in the middle. So all that is, is all angular shapes. And then we've got more angular shapes. What I was thinking about doing is just making the whole thing look like that bit. Because if you look at the shape of this, if I try and do that with this, it might work. I might be able to just do that. So there you go. So if you think of the shape of that, that would only be that bit there in the middle would be the transparent steel viewpoint. It might work. I don't know. Oh, let's just go for it. Should we just do it? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a plan. I mean, that where the plan comes together. You know what I forgot? I forgot my, uh, my lens hood. I'm just going to clean the lens. Is that better? No? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, dear. At least it's old rag. It's only got oil on it. It'll make it worse. There you go. Oh, that's, that's better. That is better. That's looking a bit hazy. That was a little bit hazy. Okay, so first of all, then, if we are going to do it with. Um, bring it a bit closer. Just look at my beautiful face. Anyway, let's see what you've got to say anyway first. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Kit Kat. <laughs> I can't wait to see it fly. I don't think it's going to do that, Mender Bond. I'd be like a brick. No, we haven't got the, um, just a second, we'd need to get something else to be able to make it fly. Let me just double check. Uh, um, I'm afraid, due to Brexit, we can't get the ion engines, no. Something to do with rules of origin, apparently. China. Crikey. <laughs> Hello, contact, say you buddy? Oh, Jasper. Did anyone else have missed? Hey, hello, Shannon. As well. Hope you're well. Hope you're still doing some woodwork. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah. Kit Kat says, I really appreciate when channels try to improve the visual quality of their videos. Even if it wasn't, was it? Because did it, did it help me licking the, licking the lens? Did that help? Uh, Kit Kat, no? Okay. <laughs> uh, that wasn't that. Ah, oh, cheers. Yeah, no, I just, you, I've got to the other channel because I, I want to be doing the woodworky type of stuff in there as well because I want to be the more educational type stuff. So I'm going to be using the same software that I use for the other channel as well. So I'll not just have stuff in the workshop, we're going to do some stuff up there as well. Hence, still got the sign, Molly Bra sign, in the in the studio above my head. So that was the idea with that. Um, but I just need it to... I'm, I'm so disorganised and I'm not very good with... Um, it's one of the reasons I struggle with languages, because my retention is really poor. Even though I know the stuff, I can't, I can't seem to like grasp it sometimes out of my head and I really find it difficult. And um, then all of a sudden, oh, it's there, do you know what I mean? But it's not necessarily at the opportune moment. It's like when I was doing um, doing collabs with you know, collaborations with like uh, Max and and when I'm asked Chris questions on the fly, I struggle. Even though I know the answers, I don't know why. I'm probably ADHD or something. Stuff not quite a you know Caroline thinks I have anyway. Scroll back down again, and then we'll get back to it to our transparency or viewpoint. Oh, there we go. Let's go back down. Let's get to the bench, and let's let, let's make some mess because that's kind of what I do. My old friend David Chaplin. Actually, I do. I, I, yeah, my old friend David Chaplin. Uh, he used to call me Messy Marcus. Poor buggy boy, though. He's a lovely, lovely, lovely man. Well, I miss him. He's a good guy. He was actually my, my dad's um, business, business partner, and also he used, he used to work together a lot as well. And I started working with him, and uh, he was working for me for ages. But he's such a, such a nice person. Oh, 
Oh, just draw another circle. Oh, that, that's exciting, wasn't it? Oh, look. There you go. Going mean, a few times. And when you do this with a compass, you don't necessarily want a sharp pencil. Well, it sounds strange. But all you'll do is just break the top off, the, um, the nib off all the time. And you won't get a very... Because uh, when you use a pencil on, on wood, it's really the reflection you're seeing. As you move it about, you see the reflection of the, yeah, the light shining on it. Where's my coffee? In my wonderful mug. That was really kind, Geraldine, that was doing that, sending that yeah, two of those to us. Very, very sweet of you. Really takes me back when you get little things like that, sort of. Really makes your day. <clears throat> right, now what am I doing? Okay, I've drawn a line, that's going to represent the outside of the hull, the more rounded part of the hull. Um, it would have been more than that, been there, but I think, I, was gonna, I, I think I'll overdo it if I do that. So what we're going to have to do is, it's still sectional. Even though it's rounded, it's, they're flats. So it's going to, oh, crikey, I think what I need to do first, actually, think about it, I need to do the hexagonal bit for the transparent steel viewpoint first, um, including what's going to be a part of the fuselage, and then go over it again on the outside with the fuselage. And what I'll probably use then is my pyrography um, iron set quite high just to create the extra details like the uh, for the actual framing of the uh, transparent steel viewpoint. How many times can I say that today? <laughs> right, so we need to draw some lines. I'm going to use a marker pen. This is all going to be a little bit how to put it. I'm probably going to have to remark this several times because, um, well, I'm going to have to get vicious with this to make it work. But the first bit we're going to do is the shape for the transparent steel viewpoint. It's technically sort of hexagonally, hexagonally, it's not even a word. Oh, well, I'll do. If Donald Trump can make words up, so can I. Yeah, so there you go. Right, so I've now got four angles, so I've got 90s and 45s basically, and then 180s there. So, um, I've got to think the next shape in the middle. So I'll get my, uh, uh, whatever I've done with it. What they put, look, oh, it's here. My compass. That's what I'm looking for. I want to draw another one, which is going to be the centre window. So, there's a centre window. Obviously you know that. You must do. You must do that. Yeah, of course you do. Is that be about right size? Maybe a little bit bigger. About there. Oh. About there. That'll do. So now I've got to draw the centre window. Dee -dee 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 -dee. This is all for one, for one little birdie family. And also to make me giggle. Make other people giggle. I like it. I've been getting lots of giggles about my, um, you know, the uh, gargoyle letterbox that we made together. You know, that was, um... <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think people think I'm mad. But I don't care. Madder the better, I say. Life is too short to worry about normalities. As long as you can get the wolf in the door. That's all I can worry about, really. And everyone's healthy, especially the family and the, kid, you know, the kids and all that. Oh, it looks like I'm going to be going to the UK. I'm not saying going back, because I live here. But I'll be visiting family in the UK, and I haven't done it for three years. Been to Panama. <laughs> Oh, as you know. All right, so, yeah, so we've got this area, this is basically... So what I'm going to actually do is, for the first stage, I'm going to actually cut these back, by including into these outside edges, then recut where the um, outside bit... And I might do it all with the sander, really aggressively, or I might do some of the hand plane. I might do both. I might just, you know, go with the flow and just, you know, I'll take a bit off there, and I'll take another bit off there. And the problem is this, I'm not going to take anything off here, so that'll be my guide. So I'll make sure I put a little line there, line there, make sure there's a line there. Um, so I'm not going to remove any material here, it's going to be everywhere else. But obviously I would be removing the lines at the same time. So I'm going to have to keep reapplying the lines, unless I can, like, in my head, I can visually sort of, um, you know, get it straight. Now, to make life easier, 
I think, so what am I going to do? How the hell am I going to hold this thing? I could put a clamp on it. I could use one of these hold downs in the bench. Like that. But there's a better way. Do you know what that's going to be? I'm going to cheat. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to screw a bit of wood on the back. And then I can put it in the vice. Because I always unscrew it later. Yeah. I think it makes sense. I hope you do. Or do you think I'm just losing the plot? Probably. Right, uh, dun, 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 dun. I've got to find out wood first. Because I want to cut a bit. Oh. Not that bit. Not that bit. Oh, that'll do. Just going to trim a bit of wood first. I'll be there in a second. <laughs> I don't want to do that in the machines, in the microphone. I bet it sounds really loud, doesn't it? It's got a splinter. Oh, it's gone. So I'll screw that on the bottom there, though. On, on there. And then, um... I'll put the voice. Need some screws. They must be too long. Oh, these will do. These will do. Yeah. <coughs> Very temporary. <coughs> oh, split the wood, look. Oh, dear. Ah, but right. I feel like I'll squeeze up tight in the vice. So I've got to put this vice that way or that way. I might have to move the cam because I want the, in the middle of the vice, which you can't see at the minute. So it's an old record, very old record of vice, that is. That's, that was enough. I've had, it, I've had it a very long time. But it's, um, bought for a tenner, one of my mates. Funny guy he was. Robin, Robin Watson. What, what's on? What's on? Oh, I can't remember anyway. Any Robin. Brilliant upholster, useless to everything else. Couldn't read it right. It was one of the ones they got forgotten about at school. You know, I feel like I got a bit left behind at school because I really struggled at school. Especially, you know, it's quite odd really because just, oh, things just like clicked half through. I think it's because I got a bit own head and gain. And I start learning stuff. It's quite a good idea to learn stuff. So what we're going to do is, um, basically, plane that back away, plane that back away, until finally we get this shape. So it looks like cutting a diamond. We're going to cut a diamond. Oh god! I'll try with this plane. I don't think this one's going to do the job. I'll try that one first. But I might use a scrubbing plane. Oh, that might be interesting. So let's try it on first. I don't think it's wide enough. I think it's, oh, what I mean wide, the blades are wide enough to get the shape. So it's going to be a bit of a. I suppose you could actually put it in the in the, in the lathe and do it bit by bit in the lathe. You get the basic shape and then finish the shape off. You might actually even do that. No, no, we'll do that. It'll explode. I don't want it to explode. All right, a scrub plane. There we go. Now this is what I call a scrub plane. Oh, wind. Sorry. <laughs> this is what I call a scrub plane. And why is a scrub plane? The idea is it can remove a lot of material all at once because if you see that the shape of that plane iron, it's got a curve in it. So it's like it's almost like gouging, it like scoops out the material. So you get this almost like a um adzed um uh, finish as well. But you mustn't go too deep on pine. It might need a sharpen. Feels a little bit on obviously I've used it and put it away without sharpening it, which is very naughty. But I don't normally do that. Well, that's what I'm telling you, I don't normally do that. Yeah, it's better. So we're going to keep doing it. All right. when, you, when you change your, your depth of cut on the, on the hand plane, and you want to say, for instance, you ought to pull it back a little bit so it's not taking so much material out, and you wind it back, oh, yeah, that's great. Do, 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 do. You pull the, pull the blade back, yep, that's about right, I'm happy with that. What you must do is get a little knob and, and spin it clockwise until you feel a bit of resistance afterwards. Yeah? Otherwise, what will happen is, as you're using it, that blade will slip back and back and back and back, back against the actual yoke again. Um, so you've got to make sure, if you do alter the depth of the cut, 
make sure you're always under a little bit of tension. Da -da 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 -da. So the more we do this, the easier it will become, because what happens, um, if I just try and concentrate on one bit, what happens is that one would be in the way of the next one and the next one. So you have to do it as you go and not go around. So it's going to be in and out of the voice several times probably. I'm starting to think, just put it in the flipping in the lathe. <laughs> already, I'm starting to think that already. Oh dear. So what I have to make sure I do is, is make sure I, my marks are regularly replaced. Otherwise, I'll be, you know, I'll have nothing to go by, and the effect you might end up putting a twist in it as you plane it. See that? I've got, to get, I've got to go down to that, so I'm having a thought now. Ooh. See that grain? How that grain's going there? I caught the blade, because obviously it's quite aggressive. And it just put that lump straight. Oh, it's hang on the bottom of the plane. It's there. It'll be removed anyway, so, it's, it's not, oh, so that'll be gone. But I'm wondering whether or not I should put it in the lay. I'm a bit worried about putting it in the lathe. The reason why I'm worried, I'm worried it's going to fly apart because it's made it seven its wood. Oh, bugger it. Should I do it? Let's put it in lathe. Let's spin it up first. It's going to take forever, always. Sort of put a block on there, and then we'll put a chuck in the lathe to hold that block. I've got some blocks. Is that one there? Ah, there you go. So all it is like wooden block like that. But I need to make sure I've got the centre. I'm going to find that centre. I'm going to drill a hole all the way through the middle. You better do it on the bent, on a pillar jaw because it's 90 degrees, but I'm not. I'll tell you, there's one thing we need to, I need to show you to do. You can make a jig for a hand drill like this one, in a slide, um, really simple to use. You can still use a jig, the drill normally, but you, for drilling 90 degrees. So it behaves like a bench drill. Yeah, pillar drill, sorry. Not the same. Look at that drill, but it's terrible, it's sharpening. Centre point now. And what I do is I then push that in there into that centre point, that's it. And now I know this is the centre. I'm going to make sure that goes, yeah, so we get a screw onto that bit there. And then we're going to whack it in the lathe. I don't remember a few weeks back I started making a picture, um, a picture using. I should have showed you. I'll do another. I'll bring it to show you. I did finish it. Um, using a photocopy. Um, we made a, fr uh, a frame using the same material. And it looks so good. It really does. That's my two little grandchildren. So, what we're going to do is hopefully this doesn't fly apart. That's what I'm hoping. Because if not. Oh, there's a possibility it could. So, I think I might replace them screws with slightly longer ones. I don't mind if it sort of like um, becomes loose. What I don't want it to do, ah, place it with those. I don't want it flying off. Or lumps of it flying off, because it would be dangerous.
Igen. <coughs> da, 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 da. Okay, that's through to the door. Uh, there's nothing holding there, so I'll put a couple of extra screws in here. Yep, put about there. I'll put a clamp on there first. Now, if I don't put a clamp on there, what I'll do is I'll actually screw it and keep the, the gap in between. So I want to avoid. So I'm going to put the screw in there. And these screws. If I catch them with the, with the um, chisel, I'm not that worried. And that will get caught with the chisel a little more. Hmm. Doesn't mean to say I want to get caught with the chisel, I want to make sure, or try not to, but if I do, I'm not that worried. Yeah, that'd be better. You've always got to have a good stock of screws when you're doing this lark. That's better. Yeah. This one here is loose, you see. Well, I've got, it's glued, but I'm not confident. Now, if you don't clamp, you know, if you don't clamp up like that, you'd have to make sure you put pilot holes in. So what happens is the screw goes in, it tries to pull each pull itself apart. It just won't do. Obviously, if it's a solid bit of wood, this wouldn't be a problem, would it? It's only because I'm using old scraps I've got laying about. Oh, yeah, that'll do. So either that ends up in the fire. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to avoid that sort of thing, especially, you know, with what's going on at the moment in the world, with global warming and all that. The least materials I have to buy is less material, less trees that have been felled. So I'd like to make sure, yeah, and also if you, you know, I'll make sure that every little element is being used. You know, every, everything has been, there's no waste. Don't want no waste. All right, so I've, I've screwed that on the back. So that's going to go into the voice of the actual uh, lathe, which is back over ha. Let's bring you to the voice, see lathe. Or the chuck, I should say. About flying off and you broke your nose. Oh dear. Oh look, I've got some bots. It'll make good TV. Use a lathe and an angle grind at the same time. Yeah, done that before. That's probably actually a really good idea, actually. But you get so much flipping dust. A lot of material got to come off there first. And there's going to be so much dust flying about the place. It'll take about half an hour to clear the air. So, uh, excuse the noise, but I'm kind of, I'm in a bit of a mess over here since the last time we used the lathe. Do you, do you just... Right, so what I'm going to do, I've got to change this with that. Thing, ha, oh, that's my chuck. So that's going to go in there. Things under my feet, I can't move around here. Oh dear. Right over there, look, so. Oh, my brace is in the way, I've got to sort that out. Oh, my, my brace and bits. Right, so we have, there's an Allen screw inside that, so I've got to make it my finder. That's for the chuck. Oh, that's the wrong one. Oh, here it is. So under this Allen key here, it's like a grub screw. And that allows you then you can then remove this from the machine, or you should be able to. It's not always that easy. Uh. 
Big grips. It's tightened itself up on there. Well, these aren't big grips, they're little grips. Oh, the big one's gone. These are rubbish, these are. Using grip, so it's actually got a hole in there, but you have a Tommy bar in wherever that's gone. Right, so that can go back to there, and that's like a sub of chuck. <coughs> but we're going to be using this chuck here, whatever it is. It's a, it's a Rome, as in R O H N or M. It's for sale there somewhere. Can't see it now. <laughs> right. So let's screw that on there. This is, can be a bit finicky. Doesn't like going on. It's right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's going. It's on. Yay! And then there's a scrub screw in the side here, and you have to do them up as well. Otherwise, it, it keeps tightening and tightening, and you don't want that. It makes it hard to get off. Right in there. Okay, so that's now in there. That's the chuck key. So basically, that moves the jaws in and out all together, all linked. I haven't used that for a while. It's entirely stiff. Actually, last time I used that, I was doing 12 platters in walnut, which were very nice. That was, was, it was only last year. I think it was last year I used that. I did I use that last? Obviously, you don't know. I doubt. <laughs> anyway. Let's get our, um, what potentially could be a flying bomb, or discus, or bouncing bomb, it could be anything. Let's just see what we can do with that. <laughs> yeah, that was last time I used that chuck, was when I made those platters, because that's what the block here was made for when I was doing the platters. And the chuck is still the right size, it, it, yeah, it just went straight in, into the jaws without having to adjust them. There you go. Got to tighten up on there, and then hopefully, what I must make sure to do is lower the speed of the oh, of the lathe, because the last thing you want is that flying off. And I've got another little small compressor down here, which is really, really quite handy, but I don't need it under my feet. No. So we failed with the plane. Something, some of it's about timing, really, as well as anything else. But hopefully, we can do this with a chisel. Spin up so it's true first. But first, before I do that, I must, must, must increase my bust. No, not that. No, well, that was another day. All right, am I on slow? I'm on slow already. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, we're on slow. So I'm going to make sure I've got a, a sharp, 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 sharp chisel. And we're going to have to be very, very careful. Um, Jasper was actually like, probably the best way would be with the angle grind. What you do with the angle grind with disc, you literally sand it. We could try that. I'll put a dust mask on. We'll give it a go. That might be fun. Because then if there's any, um, if there's any uh, screws poking through anything like that, you'll just literally sand them off. So it does work. But I will get my dust mask, which happens to be full of dust. Airline, please, thank you. I'm just blowing my dust mask out because it's a bit, um, how to put it, covered in dust. There you go. Oh, I've got to take my hat off. My head will get cold. I'm going in. Get my hat on. Can't spoil my hair. I don't know if you can hear me, but hey. More calling Olsen. Come in, Olsen. Is it Olsen or Olsen? Olsen? Oh, I can't remember. Oh dear. 
Oh, oh Robin Williams. Suffered a depression, he did, poor bugger. Oh, 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 safety specs. Must have safety specs. Really important. Now I'm really going in. It's, uh, how's that? Uh, okay. Do I look good? <laughs> I'll have a go with chisel first. I'll finish off with that, I think. Gonna take too long. And create so much dust. Right, have I got a sharp chisel? Have I got a sharp chisel? Mm. Maybe not. Remember this is pine as well, it's not, great. it's not very good for turning. Closer. I'm steaming up by the way. I'll be seeing in a minute. I'm worried about it, it's grabbing, hitting a screw. That lump up there will be gone in a minute. That'll be gone. I do it. Screw there. So if I miss that, I'll do that with the sander. That bit. There's a screw there. One of the old original screws, which means I've got to watch them, they're obviously quite long. So I'll start from there.
Ma che è questo che è bello? I'll do some more with the sander now because I've kind of I took quite a bit of material off there but it's lump here I can't get rid of because there's a screw in and I can't remove the screw because where it is. Hey hey come in number 10 Another disc. Sort of friction. <gasps> oh! Alright, so we're getting there. There's a screw there, you see. So if I change over to the sander, because obviously if you get caught on the chisel, I'll have to rip number one out. Oh my god, it's dusty. Oh. oh, there you go, that's better. Right, let's get another sander disc. And also, I better just double check my battery. Oh, I better go and get a battery pack. Walk all the way over there, is actually over here. How silly am I? Don't answer that. <laughs> I'm plugging you in. Hopefully it's not noisy. What I've been doing is I've been putting the battery pack out of the way. It seems to work. There's a dangle on here. I tried not in the battery pack lead. Oh, maybe that'll work. Hopefully that hasn't added any noise to, to the audio, as in a sort of like a weird noise, a raining noise in the background. If it has, let me know, and I'll uh, put it somewhere else. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, that did, yeah. They're really cheap discs. Oh, I have a screw loose. Oh, a nice bowl. <laughs> it looks like a cheese. That will do. Yum, yum. Doing it though, isn't it? It's, yeah, that's, that's doing it. So basically we'll have a bit of a rounded shape here. And then we'll have that tapered back here. And there's that screw. So I can't really get out. And if I did, the thing will fall apart anyway. Um, so we'll have that tapered there a little bit further back. And a bit more angle on there, and then we'll do the rest of it on the bench. But it's doing that. It's doing it, I'm sure it is. 
Hot silver glasses all steamed up. Da -da 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 -da. Anyway, it's nice to have everybody here on a Saturday evening. I have a screw. I've, some, I, some people think, I, I just like, oh, I don't know, I just enjoy myself. So I was going, some people say oh, I'm a bit nutty, but hey, uh, I, I'm, I've always been a bit of a prankster. Uh, I look up, <laughs> yeah, I was. I was like, yeah, well, with this hat on, let's get up. Oh, I've seen another hat, by the way. It's like this, but bigger. Yeah, it's like a rusky hat, it really is. Um, I'm, I'm very good. I, I think I have to get it. It's not expensive. It was in the Cafalon, of all places. Now I've got to get some wood on Monday. Monday or Tuesday, I need to get some, get some wood for the job. So, um, I might get it then. <laughs> oh, anyway, let's uh, oh, grab a disc. I need to put my tripods, they're always in the way. I've got my bench over there, just there. I've got my other bench over there, and the tripod's locked right in the middle. Uh, and I've had to squeeze past, and I'll probably knock it over. So I'll go all the way around the bench. Oh, crikey. It's like a workout, it is. One, two, three, four, look at that. At least there's no stairs. That would be a pain, wouldn't it? So I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm going to grab a couple of sanded discs out of my drawer down here, which you can't see because you're over there. Oh, sorry. Now I buy these sandies, don't cheap. I get these on. Actually, they're quite. They're not actually bad. Actually, I've had. I've had. This. And these particular sanders, I get these on Amazon. I buy hundred at a time because I get through them. And these are like uh, very coarse, forty grits sanding discs. And you know, that's not helpful. That is very helpful at all, that ain't. So I'll remove that. I'll put that one on. And let's make some more sparks. Oh, sparks, I like sparks. <laughs> so, I've got a bit more angle on there. Leaving that from, from here, so sort of uh, one angle, then we've got the secondary angle. And then the rest will be done on the bench. Ooh, hope, hope it doesn't fall bits.
That needs to go back to that here, that does. So I need to take a bit off of there. Oh, another disc. They all go to waste, don't worry. I think that'll do. I'll take that off there. Oh, I can't see. Where's my chuck? Okay, here we go. So the thing about this, you tend to get covered in dust. So I think that'll do. And we'll do the rest on the bench now. I've got too much on here. The rest of flying off and smacking you in the face. Like that you will. The mud gushing out. Gushing out? Yeah, gushing out. It won't be pretty now. Da, 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 da. Right. Oh. right, see if anyone has said whether or not the sound is okay. Da, 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 da. Oh, glasses, I need glasses, I can't see a thing. Oh. Yeah, right, um, Jasper, they do. <laughs> Sing, yeah, I'll sorry, get that, could you? I don't know if you can hear it with this on. <laughs> I'll just take this, get this off now. Oh, blimey. Can you imagine wearing that all day long when you're doing this sort of work? Not great. End up, end up looking at those poor NHS chappies and lassies. Not lassie the dog, no. That's it, as you know what I mean. Right. Looks <laughs> too good. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, Jess, well, you can get uh, they, they, they here in France. There's a chap not far from in the, in the limousine. He actually makes files by hand, and they're absolutely wonderful things. I haven't bought; they're quite expensive, about thirty odd quid for one file or euros. So um, I haven't bought one. Obviously, it's too expensive. But I don't mind noise, but I hate music. <laughs> oh no, noise! Okay. My mask looks like a tie fighter. Well, we're, 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 is it, is it, what's dusty? Oh, it's just dusty everywhere, isn't it? I put this fan back. Got my ear filled up here, you see? Got that one up here, look. That one. And then there's another one. The fan as well. They do, they do actually work quite well. So that, that bit noisy, you can probably hear the fans run and get the dust out of the air. It's really hard to avoid dust, to be honest, with doing this sort of job. Especially you TIE Fighters. There's big gaps in there, look. Don't matter, I'll get filled, so it don't matter. Oh, they weren't the only screw, look. One, two, three screws showing. But it don't matter. What happens when you use scrappy old bits of wood? Gotta find a pen, though. Oh, I don't want a marker pen. No, I can't find my marker. Oh my giddy arm. Let's get another one. Right, so we've still got faint lines on here. This one here, there, there, there. And that's obviously one as well. That's obviously one as well. One there. And there. Create our eight sides. So we'll use that compass again to make sure we've got that shape in the right place. Just about. Big hole in the middle now, which don't help. It's doing that. 
I'll do this now, nose down up. So there, there, there. There. So we've got quite flats basically, not on here, but on the outside here, but this is just my guide. I'll sand this off in a minute, because that one's actually flat. Well, I think it is anyway. So we'll try and create that shape there to this outside perimeter, and then, then I'll worry about the next bit. We'll just fill these, but it's going to be painted anyway. Boosters! <laughs> I actually don't think I've got a piece with this fat, to be honest, in pine. I can't be using my oak and stuff for that sort of job. Um, do, 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 what am I thinking? Oh, I've got a mask back on. Oh my god. Do I have to? Okay, put the eye out. Oh, don't do that. That'd hurt. Right, so we'll sand sort of flat, 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 hopefully. Before I do, I need to change it. That is, got no cut on it. Right, I'm going to get through the discs, isn't it? That pine is harder than you think. It's either that was just the screws. Right, so there.
You're right, it's eating the discs. Carving with an angle grinder. see a thing, it's okay. You sort, of, you sort of see the shape coming on now. So a little bit more detail, what I'll do is I'll do that with the uh, pyrography iron. Obviously it's going to be filling and what have you, but what I'll do is we'll have serpent that's glue, I'll just mix it with some sawdust and whack those bits. It's going to be painted anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So where's my pyrography going? Gone? Where's that going? Where's my pyrography? What have I done with that? Oh, I had it earlier. Did I put it over here? Nope. Did I put it over there? No. Where left did I put it? I had it in my hands earlier. And I put it somewhere. <laughs> I had to move it. Oh, sorry. I had to move it. At least the pyrography iron. Well, like, oh, here it is. Um, now I remember why I put it. It's quiet. That's the only thing, obviously, when you're doing live stream and you've got all this noise. I can't, like, lower the volume, can I? Not, not straight from the phone. If I was doing it via OBS. I could knock the volume down, but I can't, obviously. And also, you, 
you'd have to do it um, on the fly as well. And this is actually my working workshop, so I kind of like if I did that, I'd have to purely for video, and I'd never, I'd never make a living at doing that. I still have to do my work. Work. Well, I've got a little bit left, so we're going to plug this in, and we've got a pile. It's especially wood burning. So you, if you see the top of my head. <laughs> so that's the same though. So we're going to, I'm going to try and emphasise the details on it now with the pyrography. Um, uh, glasses, let's turn that fill off now. Pretty much clean the air, that's fine. Oh, my coffee cup, <sighs> covered in dust. Mmm, dusty coffee. All right, um, cool, it's still hot. Amazing thing, that is. So I'll, I'll whack that back in the voice, this holds it steady for me. Look, I look at a fester. <laughs> Better put my hat back on. Head get cold. Oh, thank you. I've got super chat. Oh, thank you very much. Who was that? Who was it? Who was it? Oh, cheers, Glad, good buddy. Do I have a PO box? A post office box? No. I've got a letter box. <laughs> I use a cake tin on my chimney. What well, to stop the, the water coming down? It's a nice hub cap. <laughs> I did actually, you laugh at us, um, talk about that. My, oh, on the main chimney on the house, which is where the old Arga used to be, um, we ain't got an Arga anymore because we found it didn't heat the house. Um, we've got an old clay pot from England that we brought over, an old reclaimed one. Um, but, then I got hold of a metal one for the flue, for in here. But then I made one for the house um, flue, where I put the flue in for the wood burner. Um, it's always, always better to have a flue, not just straight up the chimney these days, not unless you, not unless you want chimney fires. So, um, put that there so it can heat up. And what, now the other day, I don't know if you remember when I was using this the other day, I was saying this hurts your hand, gripping the little, pressing a bit of button in. So what I've done is, I've got, <laughs> This was done on the fly. There was a bit of inner tube that stuck over there that I used to hold that, I used to clamp the um, fuselage together with. And uh, so I cut that off, the inner tube, slid that over, over the button, and that still wasn't quite enough. It helped. It was like, it was like having power steering for the switch. But then I got this bit of wood. <laughs> I just chucked that in, <laughs> which is a bit of a broken stick that I had, a bit of wood I had to cut for a mixing stick for the glue, and now it works. But yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Put it oh, and hot, hot, not fairly hot. That moved over. Yeah, slipped. There we go. There we go. It's got red on the end. Ah, get closer. Oh, let's get closer to the action. Right, so while that's looking nice and hot, I'll go grab a pencil and the compass again, so I get these in the right position. Oh, does it look ridiculous? It's all lopsided. Remember, one of these is going to end up the hole for the um, the birdie, birdie bird. So that's going to be a straight. That's going to be a straight, straight, straight. Like that, yeah. And we'll do that with the pyrography, just to get a bit of detail in it. That's a ropey old bit of wood. You don't realise how little, how big the gaps are in this um, tongue and groove wood. Oh, it's catching a light. It's a fire! Fire! I'll do the opposite side. Let me do that one. Seems about right. Obviously, they've got to join up. You don't put pressure on the old pile. It's just it's burning, isn't it? So you don't need to put pressure on. You just literally just got to allow the, the thing to do its job. Just let it burn. You draw it through. I've got it set quite high at the moment. I've got it set to uh, 700 degrees Celsius. 
So it's pretty hot, you don't want to touch it. Now this one here, this is a 30 quid um, pyrography. Oh, and it's cheap as chips from China, obviously. But far better than spending 200 on the proprietary brand. I don't use it enough. I use it all the time, it'd be different. But so far, it's actually proved to be very, very good. I have no problems with it at all. Apart from that switch, it was a bit you know, hard on the hands after a period of time. You soon, you soon realise that, you know, that you get a trigger finger. You don't want trigger finger. And there's going to be paint over anyway, so it's not the dark lines. I could put the dark lines back in again later if I want. But it's more about just creating indentations, really, and that deep uh, below the surface of the wood. So there's, no, there's nothing in the middle there. So the next one's going to be another one there. I hope it's going to be symmetrical after all this. It doesn't look like it will be. But never mind. It's a bird box. I've got to keep telling myself that. Otherwise I'm going to be all depressed. Oh no, it wasn't, a, it wasn't symmetrical. I've got to do it again. I'm not doing it again. I've got so many bird boxes to make. And loads more bird boxes. And um, you probably we did pick up a load of trees the other day from one of our friends who um, helped us out and used his digger to do the silver birches. And uh, they've got to go on in the ground in the next week. Should be quite good. Well, I've got to go on the ground this weekend, tomorrow. I've already started digging holes. That was fun. <laughs> so we'll be putting them in the ground. At the moment, we're trying to... Our local nurseries has so far come back with the best prices for trees. What we don't want to do is be buying them all over the shop unless there's something specific that we can't get from them. Um, and obviously, we don't want things to travel too far. So the more local they are, the better. Um, it's, it's definitely the best price, but we're still scanning because everything is just far more expensive than... Than we first imagined. Well, just imagine we did do our research, but when we started deviating from the, the original species and stuff, we found out that they were a bit, um, they were a bit, had a bit pricey. Quite a lot of money. Trees are not cheap. And they grow in the wild. Whenever you're doing pyrography, the biggest problem with pyrography, especially if you do it in pine, the sort of wood you normally use for pyrography, like basswood and stuff like that, um, pine's not a great timber to use. You'd think it would be bins of softwood. But because the, the grain is coarse with the resin and the um, sapwood, uh, they, they tend to try and push you in certain directions, so it's quite hard to control. I'll be using the pyrography for some of the details on there, just add a bit of detail. Which I might do after it's been painted as well, the first coat. So it's going to be a light coat of paint, just to protect them. It sort of soaks into all the nooks and crannies. It's kind of the idea anyway. It does try and make you go where you don't want it to go. You're getting the gist, aren't you? Ah, <coughs> oh, it's still dusty in here. Ah, tickles. At least it's only pine. Northern, northern fir, that's what they call it here, but it's all of it looks like a hemlock to me. There's so many species of pine and fir. Now, Douglas fir isn't actually a fir tree. Yeah, it's called a fir tree. 
if you see it correctly written, that'll be hyphenated. So it's not a, it's not actually a fir tree, and the reason why that is, it, oh, well, it doesn't it has pine cones. It doesn't you know it's not a fir tree. It's actually a pine tree, Douglas fir, which is a very popular timber to use in constructions. You might be aware. It's actually looking quite good. <laughs> My power steering for my uh, switch works really well, even though it's very Heath Robinson. There we go, down here. And once we get this on, we'll glue it onto the fuselage once I've done these details. And then uh, we'll see what else we can do if, or see what time is really. I think how long have been streaming for? It's a very hot biography. Oh, this, this is very good bit of kit really. Sometimes you can buy good cheap stuff, but is the risk worth it? Because often it's not good. But this is so far this particular little biography set is proved to be worth its weight in gold. Well it's you know, thirty quid it costs, thirty euros. Far better than I anticipated. And I've had I've had a few of these things in the past. The old soldier soldier nine types that are oh, they waste time. They're not too bad than basswood. You can't really use them on anything else. They just don't have enough heat in them. <coughs> Sorry, a bit of coughing, but it's um it's quite tickly that old pine dust. There you go. When I'm you know working, working, as in like making shutters and stuff, I wear a mask all the time. But when you've got to talk, obviously it's um it's not very helpful. So yeah, for the other channel I bought well for the studio upstairs, I've got myself another camera coming for it, which apparently is much better quality. Uh, oh, Elgato face cam. Um, you can really see all my pimples. <laughs> and I've got a monitor coming, so. I need to get some more sound effects, is what I need. Or phrases. Um, I've got a set of special earbuds for, as well. Well, I say specially cheap. I can monitor the sound. One of the biggest problems I had on the other channels monitoring the sound. Because if, if I try and monitor it, well, you can't monitor through the um, speakers. So obviously it'll just um, come through, back through the microphone. So um, you either got to wear headphones, as in big old head headphones on your head, <coughs> which, you know, doesn't. It's not really what I'm after. I don't mind wearing headphones on my head, it's just I just don't. It's not the effect, effect I'm kind of going for. It might sound, that sounds very shallow, doesn't it? But no, it's just... Not a gaming channel, you know what I mean? It's, but I need to be able to monitor it, because... There's been times when these sound effects are either being distorted, or... Um, the volumes are you know, all over the place. And then it's like, oh... Sort of, then you lost the point of it, and you because it just it's uncomfortable for people to listen to. It's a bit like listening to people's laptop speakers. That's a pet hate of mine when people you know, listen to music for laptop speakers. For me, music has to be pleasurable, and this has to be kind of you know, maybe I'm a bit anal with that, but you know, so I still play vinyl, so I do like my vinyl collection. It's getting bigger, bit by bit. Always, on, yeah, always on the lookout for old vinyl. People, oh, oh no, the light's gone out. Oh, 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 dear me. Oh, that, was like, that was like a tremor. Did the earth move for you too? No. Okay. Right. Lady, there, like that. that's coming on quite a treat. Obviously, it's stylistic. It's not. <laughs> it is not to scale. No, it's made of wood. And it's a bird box. It doesn't need to be. To scale.
Nearly there. Well, that, that bit. Oh dear. Some windows look wider than the others. Can only go as quick as the burning lets me. Like half a meg. It's really bad. So I, I, I went three years now. And it works, it does generally work very, very well. We get very little problems with it. So, you know, you still get glitches in there, even with uh, ADSL, don't you? Or, uh, or fibre. But saying that, what we've got coming soon is, well, fibre, apparently. Apparently, they're, they're digging all the roads up around here. But I, I, I've got my doubts that I'll actually come here. So I think that'll do for that. You can overdo it, because any other day is a bird box. But I keep telling myself that. So there you go. So far, so good. Obviously, I've got to fill these little crack bits in here, fill them up. But it's going to be all painted. Then I'll go over these again. But they just, that'll show for the paint anyway. So let's have a look. Let's see what it looks like on the front of the fuselage. The Transparasteel, Transparasteel Viewpoint. What a name. Do you think the Empire Conservatives come up with names like that? I think so. Right. Oh, the chair fell over. Stuck to my bum. Right, let's bring this back up again. Now I'm in a mess again now. You've got to stay on my bench. It's all over the place. So that's going to go on there. Now I think I'll have it that way up have the cracks going down because then the water will drain out. And that's got to go on there like so. So far. So good. Can't see the dick, but is that is shaped as you can see. It is good enough. That is good enough. So that needs to be glued and screwed onto there. Um you've got plywood on that side. I've got to be careful, I've got to think about where the hole's gonna be. Because we've got a hole to go in here for the birdie. Which is gonna go into say one of these holes it's about there. It's gotta be at least a hundred and hundred and about four inches or hundred mil from the bottom. So I don't think it can be the middle. Remember the, the sleeve and the thickness of the wood. No, it's going to be that's cover the top. One. It's going to be one that's in the top one there for the hole for the bird to go in. So it'll be in there. Yeah. So I think it'd be easier or better to just glue and screw that on and put a plug in it. Um, yeah, definitely. So I'm going to put some. Get the older. Drill. Here's one I prepared earlier. Make a bit of space because I'm in a bit of a mess here, aren't I? Oh, there, all this mess everywhere it is. So... But I've got to make sure I don't put one in that one here because that one is going to be where the, um, you know, bird you go in and out of. Not a great tip, probably. So I'll put one here. One, two, one over here. And one about here. Yeah. Oh, that's a bird's got that one, that, so there. Four, oh, there's four screws. About four screws. Hold that on. Oh, what are you thinking? Don't need four screws. Hold that on. Well, it's more a case that I want to put tight, so it's almost like it's clamping it to the front. So there's more screws than we actually need. Four screws are that many, isn't it? Okay, it's that's five screws.
So I know I use the angle grinder like that quite a bit, and it's dangerous. So if you choose to do it on your neck bit. So let's go on here like that. Let's <laughs> move that clamp. Don't need that there now. So I need to wrap some glue, especially around the outside edge. But also what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a bit of mastic wherever it is, over there. And I've got a bead of mastic on there as well. So the idea being is any water drives in there, it don't you know, it's not gonna drive all the way through. I'll just get you know, go up to the mastic and stop. But I'll put the glue in the middle and then the mastic around the outside edge. To stop water ingress. <laughs> this glue is 100% waterproof. It goes off, it's off. That's it. Done. And hard, generally. I can't show you. I could have showed you, actually. It goes off. It's virtually brittle when it goes off. So I'm going to clamp that on to there first. Not to the top. So it's going to put a clamp right through. Oh, actually, I'm going to put a screw right through. I think that might be easier. Just hold it in the place and then put a clamp on. We'll see. I might change my mind in a minute. You don't know like. That's got to be too short. Actually, is it too short now? Hmm. Be careful that the screws you see, they don't go poking right into the box. There's a plastic container on the inside of this. I don't know if you remember. We had a, that was a, a popcorn container inside there, for which I mean, put the two wooden discs on either end, and then then we planked it. Let's see how far that sticks through. Yeah, that's no, not enough. I just put my fingers in the glue. Oh dear. Yeah. Yuck. All right, screw a bit longer than that one. So that was a 40 mil, 50 mil. I've got any 50s. Got 50s over here. I've got some 50s. So need another 10 mil. Which will be fine for that bunt. So that's going to go there. Like so. As you do. Get in the hole. That's what she said. Right. Uh, there to there. I haven't watched any Graham's videos recently. Uh, I should be ready. It needs to go that way a bit. Do you know what? If I put it that way, I've got to worry about it falling off, have I? That makes sense, doesn't it? Idiot, aren't I? There it is. Aha, that's done it. That's good there. And that's too much. Oh my god. I find how to centralise it. I could use the nail gun. I don't want to be like a arsehole first, don't I? I don't want to be like a bed of nails. No, I'm gonna leave, I want it to hang over a little bit on the bottom here, so the water can run and drip off instead of capillary and back on itself. But the top, I want flush. Yeah. There we go, that one's in there. Da, 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 da. So need some inch halves, which are these ones. So it's not even too long. I don't want to poke it into the plastic of the box. Do you know what I forgot to do? After all that, what did I forget? The mastic. What an idiot. Yes, I'm going mad. Right, where's the mastic? Come here, boy. There we are. 
This is just acrylic mastic, like baths. Yeah, I've got acrylic baths in. It's not silicone. You can't reuse really silicone because then you, if you want to put the first coat of paint on, if they're water-based paints, it'll resist it. So, oh, silly me. The thing is, you see, all around this outside edge here, with all these cuts in this wood, if I don't seal that with that, within reason, you know, it's not a perfect situation, is it? But it's um, it's got to help. Come on. Yeah. I had a job once, you wouldn't think so, but I was um, resealing windows with uh, polyurethane mastic. This was on an old um, glass sided building in Norwich. Well, hanging off. Uh, oh. This like, oh, weird kind of harness arrangement. And this crane thing that's at the top. Max sticking up these windows, hanging off a bit of a rope. Problem is, you're moving. You sway. Uh, that way up. Over there. And when you're swaying about with a big mastic gun, I'll tell you, that's not easy. Now I feel happier. Yeah, it was just um, polyurethane mastic. Resealing all these windows. And you have to, what you have to do is you have to put your mastic, you clean out all the old um, bead that was in the old framing. And you have to, um, but they're, leak, they're leaking basically. And uh, you, you have to ooze, obviously makes it clean. You ooze all your mastic in, it's coming out all over the place. So it's right old mess. Then you squirt it with this, well, it's a bit like fairy liquid, but it was detergent. And we used all these special little tools to make a nice neat shape with the... You basically cut off, you don't like smear it in and create all this horrible thin edge. You actually like, when you run, say for example, that's your tool, you're not doing it going that way over the joint. You're actually cutting it off, cutting the excess off. And because where you soaped it all up, it doesn't stick. So it peels away. How are you supposed to do a bath? You do a bath seal. You can see these people, they get their finger and run their finger around the bath. No, no, that's wrong, don't do that. That's silly. Right, well that's on. So I'm gonna make some plugs to go in those holes because that'll just make it easier. Plugs! Oh, plug cutter's already in. Let's make some plugs. Have you seen my plug cutter? You probably haven't at some point. Dee, 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 dee. Right, there we go. We're going to the pillar drill. The only problem is these tripods have legs and they get caught on everything in a workshop. Cables generally. And chairs. And the bench. So here we are. We are dropping the power pack on the floor. As you do. So I'll plug it back in. There you go. So here we are. We are at the pillar drill. Now this old pillar drill I've had for many, many years. And it's a bit worse for wear. But it still works. So who cares? On the other channel, I've been having people, well, it's usually the same person, and they, they say, oh, I see you've got a right-hand drive car still. Yes. Okay, what are you going to do, buy me another one? <laughs> I can't afford to replace my car. <laughs> and also, it still goes, it still does it. We don't go very far, so it still does what it needs to do. And, you know, it's right-hand drive. It's not worth anything here at all. You'd like to give, to give the thing away. Because in France, you have CT, like your MUT, but your CT, when you sell it, you must have 18 months CT on it. You can't sell a car unless you're scrapping it in France without a CT. You can't get, the other person can't get it registered. So you have to um, put, yeah, put a fresh CT on. The CT is the MUT, or the equivalent of an MUT. Luckily, the nice thing about the CT is, once you've got your car, you, uh, 
I only have to have it done every two years. Not every year. It's quite handy. And it costs, uh, uh, well, car about 70, 70 euros. I think it is at the moment, around 70 euros for CT. And it lasts two years. The other thing is you don't have road tax. No road tax in France, as you probably already know. But what you do have to do, when you buy a car, you have to pay a, a force, like a, what do they call it now? Move it's like a. It's like a two-way tax. If, for instance, you buy a car and it's an eco car, they can end up paying you money. That's how it works here in France. So, you know, the government uh, end up giving you money if you buy an eco car. But if you buy, like, for instance, I don't know, a Land Rover or something like that, or something that's a gas guzzler, and oh, so, there's cables everywhere, oh, good God, and hose pipes and, you know, airlines. Um, but if you buy a gas guzzler, it ends up costing you, you money. But if your car is over 10 years old, it's actually half price. So, um, second hand car market here is actually quite good. And this is right hand drive, of course. Because it's terrible. <laughs> and people say, well, you can't see well, the wrong side of the road. You see perfectly well. That's a fallacy. I can, I, if you had like a fastback car or something like that, yeah, you'd have a hell of a, an awful blind spot. But when you have a car like mine, I've got, like, I've got this next trail, which is a four wheel drive. And the, 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 the vision in it is very good, even the fact that it's right hand drive. There's no need for me to change it. Change it. I can't afford to anyway, so, you know, I'm poor, but I used to have, you know, I used to be, not well off, but I was quite, we were quite comfortable. But, um, yes, we went to a business in England before that recession, 2007, 2008, or 2009, we were screwed. <laughs> plugs, plugs, glorious plugs. Oh, put them in the holes. These are 10 mil plugs, these are. They're cut with a 10 mil cutter. And the holes that have been created by the cutter on this drill provides me with the clearance space for these plugs. So that is the same diameter as the diameter of that cutter. Very handy it is too. But you have to be careful because you can still get Imperial and you can still get obviously metric. And they don't they don't they no. The 3A is slightly, slightly, slightly different size to the 10 mil, for instance. Yeah, and the plugs, the plugs, end up, I've been too loose, they're too, too um, tight. A bit of glue in those holes, and I'll whack those plugs in there. I know I could just fill, I'll fill the other bits of piece I know, but it's, it's just so much easier when you use a plug, because you just sand the plug, but it's done. The filling's done, isn't it? So we're just going to, oh, you can't see. But I'll just put some glue in the top of these holes that I have. Now we've been streaming now for oh god two and a half hours, so I'm just gonna whack these in there, and then we'll have a little chat, and then I'll call that it for now. Now I'm gonna paint this, but I'm not gonna paint it um, live because it's a bit silly. I'm just painting it, so I'm gonna paint this tomorrow or next day or sometime anyway this week when I get a chance to actually do it, and I'm gonna paint the whole thing just as base colour before we add any more details. Yeah, I've got a bit of sanding to do around here. You know, I'm lining it up, what have you. As well. Yeah. But what's done that, I think the next thing we're doing, we're doing the solar array wings, these bits. The more details on here, more bits and pieces to go on here. And then you have a little bits need to be stuck on. I can think of. All right, so plugs are in, see? They've got plugs in there, a bit knobbly at the minute, but they'll be sanded off. Or peeled off with a... A chisel, a sharp chisel, or a uh, flush cut saw. It's a very fine saw. You probably, I think you might have seen me use them before. You need to cut them off. Then I'll be going around making sure all the little nooks and crannies are filled. Using, it, using this mastic again, which is acrylic mastic. It's, it's, this stuff is no more than decorator's caulk. That's all it is. Now, decorator's caulk here in France is expensive, so I don't, I don't buy it. I just buy that. I think the same, it's the same thing as stuff. There's no point, is there? Anyway, see so we go. So we're getting there, aren't we? Getting there. I've got a bit of a hole in the top there for the birdie. A little perch on the front there as well. Obviously, it's still got my perch, even though it's a tie fight, isn't it? You know. And then we might have some. Yeah, I don't know. These feel they feel superfluous. Super, superfluous. <laughs> oh dear. I don't know the things we do on YouTube. Have you ordered my? No, I'll tell you what I have got. 
I got my lights. I'll show... Oh, God, the cable's in the way again. I, let me, I'll just have to... I'll go, I'll go this way. Might be quicker. They're into Maplands here anyway, so, you know, I wouldn't be at Maplands. I think you can get things from RS here in France. But anyway, I bought them. Yeah, they're little garden stick things, you know, little bit solar lights. So what what name but basically we'll be using. You talk about the eyes, obviously. I could even use them on hair as well, couldn't I? For a bit of fun. But you know, they're cheap. Very cheap. They're about euros all these are. I think they're actually 80 cents. And that's the bit I want. So what I'll do is this piece here be mounted onto the letterbox, you know, the gargoyle letterbox. And all I've got to do, use my sold nine, which happens to be here. Solder fly lead, you know, a couple of wires off it. You know, off the, the you know, off the live and the neutral. You, with an LED, you got to make sure the right way round because LED is effectively works like a valve. It's one 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 way. So then I'll put that there, or then bond that into the eyeballs. <laughs> and maybe put like a little bit of um, red nail varnish, also so they glow red. That's my idea anyway. The thing about these, you see, these are ten a penny, and they're easy. They're really cheap to replace. You know, so you can easily get these. The, the, you know, you, you get these in the UK exactly the same. I oh, know, I've had them in the UK as well. And they've got a little solar panel on them, a little tiny internal battery. And that's, and that's all I need. So I just need to separate that from there. And that just pops out, actually, like that, if I remember rightly. This cover comes off, slides off. It's got some soft glue in there. I hope so. <laughs> it's coming. It's a coming! There she blows! Was it good for you too? Oh, I hope so. Well, there you go. Yeah, I slid it out. So, oh, just that bit. <laughs> right, that pop. That look at that. That pops out of there. There's a little bit there. So I won't be surprised. I can just pop that. It's probably just snapped into place. Shall I, shall I have a look? Oh, look! The light comes on. Oh, there's a light. And that's going to be the eyeballs. So yeah. Anyway, I've got to sold a couple of wires onto that. And that'll be mounted on the top um, somehow. And then, uh, yeah, then <laughs> when the light goes down, the eyes will glow. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, just got, you got to scare the gajibas out of them, haven't you? Ain't it mad? But they're cheap, so that, they'll do that. So, yeah, yeah I didn't keep from Maplands. Um, oh, Action, which is like a... You know, you can buy anything from Action. It's one of them kind of like QD type places, but better. Loads better, in fact. Um, I think they're Dutch. I think it's a Dutch company. I might be wrong. Use the LEDs on tape. Ah, uh, oh, Conrad, yeah. Oh, I know Conrad. I haven't been to one though. I've never been to a Conrad. I know of it. The and I'm I'm confused. The witch. I'm confused. What is that? What is that? I'm oh, sorry. You think we're making a dice tower for Shannon for when they play D and D? What's D and D? Dice and dice. A dice. You want to make some dice? Maybe we could do it one day. Make a dice. Um, a pillar drill or a router would be very, very, very handy. But you haven't got to. There's other, other ways. Because you can actually um, cut the little half round dots into each dice quite easily. And then you can just fill them, not fill them, but put a little dob of paint in them, in each one. You can just spray it if you like, spray the whole, whole thing. And then sand it flat again and that leave black dots. Or red dots, whatever colour dots you like. That's kind of how I do my um, signs. Whenever I want to paint my signs, I, have, I want the letters to be black, for instance. Oh, Dungeons and Dragons! Oh, I like get Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have a look into that. I'll see whether or not we can do stuff. That'd be quite cool. Uh, uh, uh. Donation TIE Fighter Box. It could be, it could be. It's, the only thing is, there's no way of getting into it at the moment. That's what I've got to think about how I'm going to put it, yeah, so we can clean it out. 
Yeah, it's just scraps of wood. That's all it is. You know, do it, and it's just um, wood's expensive for a start. It's not cheap here. It's cheaper here than it is in England, but still, it's not. All the cheap materials in England, well, they used to be cheaper. They're not at the moment. Um, but it's it's just one of the things that you just. I like to use what we got, whether it be, um, and also what I can find, because, like, for instance, our local intermarket, what is happening? Yeah, well, I'm looking at your dice, dices. Anyway, I think I'm going to call it it anyway. We're now we're streaming for, like, over two and a half hours, and if you let me, I'll just go on and on and on and on. <laughs> I really need to get myself prepped up for tomorrow night stream as well, so I'd like to get some of them, you know, I don't know why I keep doing that. Oh, am, I, am I a tea drinker? Or am, I, am I a coffee drinker, Jasper? I, yeah, I drink coffee nearly all the time now. I used to drink tea once upon a time. But no, I'd, um, I drink coffee. Ever since I've been in France, I drink coffee. And that's what, yeah, obviously in France is what they drink. There's many drink, they don't drink tea. And also, you can't really get, it's hard to get good, you know, good tea bags here. Or, good, or loose, even loose tea. Well, they get twinings loose tea now. We found that. But no, just do what the, do what the, do what the French do. We eat what the French eat, apart from anglets. What's that anglets? Whatever they're called, those horrible sausages. But it's a new sausage, just what you want. Just using the glue that got left. I was going to make some sawdust in it, but I think I want that to hold it together. You know, <laughs> just because of whack this glue in there, then I am going to call it a night because I have a lot to do. I've got to get ready for tomorrow's live stream for the other channel. Um, I've got a lot to learn with that live streaming. You know, um, I want to do more in here. I really want, I can't obviously warrant it at the moment because I don't obviously have enough food to do. I mean, but in time, hopefully. I'll have enough people watching to make it worthwhile investing in more cameras and stuff in here, for in here. Maybe the same camera, you know, the face cameras would be quite good. So I'll do multiple cameras. Because then you have one straight above, over the bench, and that one got all this faff, got a lot of faff going on at the moment, because I have to move things about all the time. So you'd have cameras in various areas, and you use a switcher, and you just switch between the cameras using the stream deck. So I've, which I've actually got, in my, I've got one in my... Um, studio upstairs now. Very, I love that thing. I need to learn how to use a proper one. It can do a darn sight more than what I know. So, yeah, I've been, I've been sort of, anything I've been earning, I've been investing in stuff. Whether it's sensible things, I don't know. We will see. But the other channel's actually doing, been doing all right again now. It's been suffering big time and it's quite and um, all of a sudden, like, the switch has been turned back on again. It's bizarre. That's U2 for you, isn't it? It's either that or, or, the, you know, the, or the topic the videos I've been doing. Maybe that went, Maybe that didn't help. And then when you start losing popularity, then it takes a while to get it back again. Oh, I don't know. It's a fickle thing anyway, doing um, trending content. You know, but people don't search you, so it's not searchable content. I don't think this is either, you know, who's, I don't know about you, but I don't think anyone would search Bird Box um, TIE Fighter. Maybe they will, I don't know, I might be wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a big search, so it's going to be quite a, a niche, I'd have thought. So, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll fill all the holes oh, no, on it. Yeah. Oh, that'll do. I've got no glue left anyway, I've used it all. Right, so there we go. So far, so good. <laughs> see, see, it's got the shape. You can see the shape going on, can't you? Sort of, yeah. Now, the top of it, which is here, I'm going to shape that in more into with this. Well, I might do, might not. Yeah, and the bottom I'll keep it hanging down, because the water that runs off here can run off the bottom lip, then, you see, and not capillary back to the bottom and hang. You want to get the water off. I'm not doing any de detail on the back here. I've got to finish that off, obviously. But um, 
pub, I'm not too detailed, can you all see it? There's, but I will on the actual, um, the wings I will. <laughs> it's getting there though, it's come together, you know, it looks, it's looking like a TIE fighter. But the more kind of little, little tiny bits of detail we add, I think that's going to make yeah, a lot of difference. Especially on here, there's quite a bit of detail to go on to these solar array wings. So extra bits of wood. Because they're actually on the real ones, they're actually quite, on well, the real ones, they're not the real ones, but you know, on the, 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 in the film, they're actually quite, these are quite thick. They're quite built up of layers. I've got to remember, it's a bird box. It's a bird box. Anyway, I am going to say I'm going to love you and leave you all. I'm sorry. And I hope you have a... You know, oh, uh, the girls' union is close to the Asian store, so they pick up tea from them. Ah, oh, I got you. Oh, the Asian... Oh, OK, yeah, why not? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, we have a... Um, what's Meta? Of course, yeah, it is part of the course. <laughs> yeah, I got back again. No, with the battery, I'm actually got, I'm plugged into that at the moment. It was, um, the internet went again. A couple of times it's, it's, it's time sort of that went out. I don't know why, a little glitch. Saturday, I suppose it's uh, Saturday, and it's probably busy. I don't know, guessing. No, 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 there's going to be hatch in the back. I, I mentioned it earlier, there'll be hatch in the back. I was thinking, how am I going to do that? So, yeah. I did. I did talk about that earlier. I sort of mentioned it, but I need. I need to, I've, probably what I'm going to do is get a hole saw, a big hole saw, and create a big hole, and then I can literally just have a couple of latches, and then I just sort of place. So it'd be like a bit of wood going across, two little yokes, and it'll, I could just do that, or sit on the two little yokes, and then pop into place. Provided it's draft proof, obviously, it needs to be draft proof. Water, don't want water getting get in either. So whatever I do, I'll, 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 I will do that. Because you've got to clean them out, haven't you? Crikey. That's got to be a nightmare. All these big bird boxes I've got to put up. And I've got to clean them. And then there's all these bat boxes. Do you know what would probably be quicker? Providing there's no birds in there, it's probably quicker just to swap the bird box over, have the spares. And as you clean, you'll just, whip, just swap them over. Zzz, off. Zzz, on. There's a new one up there, and then you can do it on the bench. If you've got all your bird boxes, you can clean them all out. Sterilise them, whatever you've got to do. Yeah, you're all right. What happens with a period of time? Because we did have one at the back here. We've got several at the back here, but we've got one's been at the back there. It built up and built up, built up with rubbish and poo. So the hut was crust in the bottom. You know, that was in the tree. I mean, it, you know, it was all grown over. It was one for the um, robins. And um, because the robins, they don't, they don't, they don't, generally they don't go on the surface of your building or, you know, they're not exposed. They tend to be a little, you know, they like to be tucked out of the way, the robins do. Um, but yeah, they make, that's quite a mess. <laughs> I'll say, check your baggie. I'm looping. That must be an earlier. Cool. Well, that's it for today. I really must do other stuff. <laughs> I really appreciate everyone coming and what have you. And cheers, Glasgow, for the, for the super chat. It's really is appreciated. Thank you. Um, but yeah, the next next phase will be after. Well. I'm off camera, I'm going to give it, get it all painted up grey. You won't see all these lines. I'll put them in again with the um, pyrography iron. Um, and then we'll do some deep, probably them do some details on the wings. Um, and then I think we'll be getting a bit close. Any more little details we can add as we go along. But I need to do some other. But I'll get the bulk of it done. One more show, I think. Maybe two. Maybe two. But we'll get the bulk of it finished off. Um, and then the rest of it will be done. Maybe one doing other stuff as well. So I'll be sitting on one side and we'll just, oh, we'll just do a bit of that. Anyway, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Yeah, like. <laughs> I've got 14 likes. That's pretty cool. Cheers. So, anyway, I'm going to go. So, ta-ta. I've got to find my buttons, eh? Where my buttons? The camera's all covered in old dust. Oh, dear. Here we go. Oh. Uh, oh, coffee. Oh, I've got to press that button as well. Oh, God, too many buttons. I need, I need my coffee. Oh, shall I wait? No, there you go.